every once in a while, a pattern will just catch my eye and I think, I really just wanna fish this thing. And I found one like that today. It's a fairly generic caddis dry fly, but it's got a little bit of flash in it. Now this one was created by Lee Clark of Oregon. Now Clark was a high school art teacher. And in the winter of 1982, he was teaching his students how to make wall hangings and plant hangers and things like this macrame owl. And I know some of y'all are old enough to remember these things from the 70s. But he had the idea of brushing out some of this macrame yarn and making it a body of a fly. Or maybe it's just slightly above the body, but under a wing, so kind of a, a trude style. Now Clark did not invent the true style of fly, but he might have been the first one to use this macrame yarn tied like this. Now he came up with several flies in this style. I think the primary one was a golden stone fly, but also the one I'm tying for you today, the deer hair caddis. And he actually wrote a book on these flies published in 2000 called Fly Tying with Poly Yarn. I think it's got 12 patterns in it. It's only 56 pages, but I did find a used copy of it out there and it was only $6. So being the book nerd that I am, yeah, of course I bought it. So I'll let you know what I think about it in a couple of weeks. Anyway, this pattern I'm tying for you today, Clark's Deer Hair Caddis. Actually, I'm tying a slight variation of it. Instead of using a flat mylar tinsel, I'm gonna use a diamond braid, just eh, because why not? It's a really simple tie. Doesn't take long at all, but it's one of those that you just know is gonna be a fish catcher. I think y'all are gonna like it. So there it is in the vise, Clark's Deer Hair Caddis. It is certainly a flashy looking caddis imitation. Now, common size for this, 12 to 18. I'm gonna go with a 12. This is a standard length barbless dry fly hook. And I'm gonna put down some tan thread. Now, the first thing we catch in, the original calls for a flat mylar tinsel. Just kind of this stuff right here in gold. But I'm getting a little crazy. I'm using some diamond braid. This hairline, diamond braid, and gold right here. And let's see how this stuff is gonna look. It might look a little too thick, but the one you saw in the vise at the beginning, I did use this, and I was able to pull it flat enough to make it work. So yes, obviously I'm not tying this in the original way, but I think this is just kinda cool. And I don't use this stuff very often, so I thought I'd give it a try. Okay, so I caught it in right there, and now I'm gonna have to pull it kind of tight as I wrap it around because I want it to be, you know, still kind of a flat body. But I want this crinkly stuff. I think that looks kind of cool. Okay, when you get it up front, pretty close to the eye. Not real close. We got two more components up here. Go ahead and catch it off. Now this part is kind of what Lee Clark was famous for using macrame yarn. And this stuff, it's a three strands. I'm just gonna use one strand of it. So it's really just a, a poly yarn. Um, kind of fuzzy, kind of buggy looking stuff. I'm gonna catch it in maybe just a little bit longer than the bend of the hook, because I'm gonna brush it out and then I will trim it here in just a second. So I'm gonna take my brush right here and just really Kind of fluff this out. Got it pretty good and fluffy right there. Now I'll just pull it out and trim it to size, which is really just a little bit past the bend of the hook. Now for the wing, just standard deer hair. I got a little bit here in my stacker. Let's see how that's stacked. I think that's going to be fine. So it's not a big piece. Uh, right there, I'm gonna go just a little bit longer than that macrame yarn. Catch it in with a pinch wrap, and if it flares up on you in the back, that's gonna be okay. You can just take some loose wraps to lay it down. And that's really about the flare I want, so I don't need to work with it too much more. Just get another securing wrap up front and snip this excess. Get this as close as you can and you know maybe a little bit of a taper if you can get it so now before we catch in this hackle i do want to spend a little bit of time smoothing this out trying to get a nice smooth ramp up here otherwise it's going to be you know your hackle will be jumping all over the place so spend a few wraps just trying to smooth this out right there 
and maybe that's enough. And I do have a little bit of a step down right there, but we'll see if it's gonna work. So I'm taking my brown dry fly hackle. I'm not going to put it in the hackle gauge. I'm just gonna put it around. See that, that's too long right there. Now pull it until I get, oh, about the length I want, say maybe right there. Now I'm gonna try and catch this in. Oh, perpendicular to my shank right there. Okay, that's three wraps on it. You can see my thread is, uh, you know, splitting up on me a little bit. So a clockwise spin should take care of that. I'm gonna put one wrap right behind it. Just try to keep that propped up perpendicular. Now I'll leave that stem in, take a few wraps forward. Now I can snip this excess stem off. And a few wraps right here to get my thread right back oh, halfway down that head and that's probably where I'm going to catch off this hackle. I'm only going to do three maybe four wraps but up to you how heavily hackled you want it. I think that's four and that's going to be enough so let's go ahead and catch this off and snip it. Now I'm going to just make a little bit of room for a whip finish here by pulling these back. I'm not pulling them back too far. I don't really want them swept back, but just enough to get some room right there for my whip finish. Let's go ahead and get that in. And this can be a little tricky if you've got fibers going forward. You might just have to zigzag it through here a little bit. My goal there was to not trap any of those fibers when I'm doing the finish. And I think we're fine right there. Let's snip this thread, see if we have any cleanup. I think we're fine. We got a couple of fibers going all over the place, but what's the fish gonna see that right there? Yeah, I think this fly will fish just fine. Small drop of head cement and we're good to go. So that's it my friends, Clark's Deer Hair Caddis. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.